All right, so if you've never traveled with camera gear before, it can be a little bit daunting taking your precious gear out into the open world, and it's hard to know what camera bag to bring and what kind of stuff you want to keep with you when you're traveling. If you load too much, then it's too heavy, and if you have too little, then sometimes you feel like you're missing out on shots. So today, I'm just going to show you the bag that I carry with me when I travel most of the time and some of the basics that I make sure to have with me when I hit the road. All right, let's dive into it. Okay, so first, I have the Wandered PRVKE or Provoke 31 liter photo bundle bag. Um, I, as soon as I laid eyes on this bag about five years ago, I knew I had to have one and I got one and I have been so happy with it ever since. Um, this is a fairly rugged, durable bag for when I spend a lot of time outside or if I'm traveling. Also, it doesn't look like a camera bag necessarily, which I like, especially if it's got several thousand dollars of equipment inside of it. Um, it's nice and big and it's comfy and it has a, uh, a photo area down here as well as a spot for some additional storage for whatever else you might want to bring along with you, which I really like. Um, just to, going over some of the, the quick features here is this uh, durable material on the back um, is like a vinyl or something like that. They'd probably be mad to hear me say that. But anyway, it's tough. Um, dust and dirt and whatever you put on it when you lay it down just kind of falls right off. Um, it does get a little bit of wear and tear as it goes, but I've, I haven't actually had any tears or anything in it. It just looks a little weathered, which actually I kind of like. Um, there's really good side access here that'll get you into the camera cube compartment where all of the uh, valuable breakable things are. Nice and protected in there. Um, it has the roll top, which can essentially double the bag in size when you roll it out. You can have it, I think, about up to here. And so if you want to stuff a blanket or a sandwich or whatever you might want in the top, you always can. Um, you've got your water bottle spot over here. If you're bringing a tripod, you can also use this clip and that, uh, that little pouch there to hold a tripod. Super comfy straps here. The photo bundle does come with waist straps as well. I just don't typically use those. Um, passport pocket back here for keeping uh, little paper valuables that uh, you don't want any creeping hands to be able to get at while you're maybe in a large crowd of people. Um, there is a felt lined cell phone pocket up here um, and a key pocket over here which has a little clip. I don't know if you can see that but there is a little clip there uh, for attaching your keys to. So this bag just has a ton of clips on the outside, a ton of different storage areas, um, and is generally really durable and a good size for me and what I bring with me. There's also a spot for a rain fly on the bottom, but I, I don't know that I've ever used a rain fly in my life. All right, so opening the camera bag up, um, you can access through the side, but when you wanna organize your gear, you can open it up like this. And that opens up like this. Here you have that top area that I was talking about just a minute ago for your additional storage. Uh, you have a spot here for laptop and a tablet. Um, I have an M1 14 inch MacBook Pro, fits in here perfectly um, and lots of good padding here so I know that it's safe when I'm carrying it around. And then here, is your photo cube, which is where you keep all the sensitive gear. And this is also completely removable. If you wanna just take this out, attach a strap to it and hit the road with just this, or if you wanna just use the backpack and leave the camera stuff at home, you can always just pull it out and then a flap under here folds down and then you have just one big compartment there that you can use for whatever you like. All right, so for starters, we'll start with the camera. I have a uh, Sony a7 III. I actually have two of them. Usually when I'm traveling, I'll just bring one. Um, I use these because they're great hybrid cameras. They shoot great photo and video, 24 megapixels and 4K video. Um, eventually, I plan to upgrade to the a7 IVs, but for the time being, these work great for me. I have the 40 millimeter. 2.5 lens on the front and that is because it is so exceptionally sharp and small and 2.5 is a really nice aperture to have for a variety of different things. 
Um, I like that it's just a little bit wider than a 50. Um, when I'm traveling, this lens stays on my camera most of the time, and I absolutely love it. So the a7 III and the 40 millimeter 2.5 stay together most of the time because they're my go-to lenses when I'm traveling. So I will set those here in the camera bag, uh, facing the uh, side pocket side here so that when I go to access through the side, it's right there and I can take it out and put it back easily. Nextly, I have the 17 to 28 millimeter 2.8 lens from Tamron. Um, this is one of my favorite lenses to bring when I'm traveling just because it's great to have a, a nice wide angle lens when you're, when you're going places, um, especially if there's any sort of architectural element or say you're shooting the Milky Way or something where you just really need to get wide so you can capture it all. 17 millimeter is a great focal length to do that with. Um, this lens is also extremely lightweight. If I'm shooting any video, I'll often put it on the gimbal. Um, it's just a great all around wide angle, super light, all internally focusing, really, really sharp. Love this lens. Um, you might notice that I don't have lens caps on my lenses and you're right, I probably should, but I notoriously lose lens caps. Um, so I have ProMaster HGX Prime filters on there. I don't know if you'll be able to read that, but there is a little filter on there from ProMaster. I feel like they are very durable and my lenses are protected even if I don't have a lens cap when I use those filters. Is it the best way? Maybe not, but it's how I do it. I'm gonna put that right here in the camera bag. Another necessity that I always bring with me is my Godox TT350 for Sony. Um, this really tiny little flash is pretty powerful, only takes two double A's and is really lightweight and easy to pack around. Uh, when I'm shooting, even with this little tiny lens, it's not, uh, it's not crazy big. Um, it's not, the camera doesn't feel way too uh, lopsided when I use it. So because the camera that I use doesn't have a pop-up flash, I just keep one of these with me with some extra batteries and I store that here in the camera compartment as well. Another thing that I'll bring with me when I'm traveling is just a little 35 millimeter uh, point and shoot camera. This is the Olympus Stylus Epic, the 2.8 version. I chose this one because it's so small. Um, you can get these sometimes if you're watching uh, use Photo Pro's inventory. They have a lot of film point and shoots and a, just a ton of great film cameras in general. I keep this along with an extra roll of film, um, put that in here right by the flash. And then I'll show you here, um, inside this side pocket are some elastic pockets um, that are perfect for a roll of film and an extra battery, which I always keep with me. And I keep those right there so that if I open that side pocket, I'm right there accessing either the other roll of film or the extra battery. It's all right there. I don't have to dig around for anything. The last thing that I keep in the photo compartment itself, the camera cube, is a little Deity microphone and the uh, audio cable that I need for it. That way, in case you know there is anything where audio is gonna be really important if I wanna shoot some video of a stream or something and I just really need to hear the audio, um, I've got something a little bit better than the in-camera microphone uh, and a nice little windscreen just to make sure that I'm able to capture the audio that I need if I get into a situation where I'm gonna need that. And those go right here. All right, so that does it for all the stuff that I keep inside the camera cube. I'll close that up and then we'll move on to the rest of the gear and the rest of the bag. And I just wanna point out that um, all of the gear or at least all of it that I can, that I have here today, including everything that I'm shooting this with, um, I will put in the description so that you can take a look and, and maybe pick one up yourself. Now, going up and into the roll top here. First thing is, I bring a sketchbook and some pens. And that's for a number of reasons. Um, a lot of times when I'm traveling, that involves waiting and I like to do drawings. But also, if I'm trying to plan out something to photograph or maybe a quick little video series or something, I like to take notes. So having something to write with uh, and something to write on for notes and ideas when you're traveling around, especially if you're spending a lot of time waiting, it's a great thing to have. I always keep that with me right here in the bottom of my bag. Well, in the bottom of the top of my bag. Next, a small little uh, tripod. This is the Photix MT3. I'll put that in the description as well. Just a very small but very strong tripod. Um, 
pretty versatile as well. Um, I don't go anywhere without it, especially if I'm trying to travel light and I don't want to bring my full tripod, which is back there holding my other camera. Um, I've always got this with me along with a cell phone adapter just in case I want to shoot some B-roll or want to take a selfie with my friends. It's good to have a cell phone adapter here. And that'll fit right there in the top. Another thing that I don't leave home without is this right here, the Tether Tools power bank. Um, it is 26,800 milliamp hours and it is USB-C charging, has two USB-A ports and um, it can charge my laptop at least once um, and make sure that my camera batteries and my cell phone stay charged, especially in those times where I'm not sure how often I'm gonna be out to power. Having this with me really makes sure that I'm covered. Um, I also bring with me the power cable for that and the Tether Tools branded uh, USB-C charger for that because um, not only can I use this for anything that I need USB-C to my computer and I can use it to charge my power bank, but also just these I can use to charge my laptop. Instead of having the big Apple charger, just having these two things, I can plug it into a wall and charge my laptop. Is it as safe as the Apple charger? I have no idea. This is just how I do it. I don't necessarily recommend that that's how you do it. It's just, I save a little room with redundancy here and having a smaller charging setup. Speaking of charging camera batteries, when I'm traveling, I only travel with this ProMaster Dually charger. It charges two of my camera batteries, um, just USB-A. I can plug it right into the power bank or plug it into the wall. Um, it's just super small, extremely light, and you can make sure that your batteries are charged. It's not very fast, but if you're just like charging it while you're sleeping, it'll get the job done. Another piece of gear that I probably should have got a long time ago, but ever since I have gotten it, I've been really happy that I have it is this here uh, ProMaster rugged SD card case. It holds SDs and micro SDs, 12 SD and 24 micro SD, just to be able to keep all your memory together, organized, and it's waterproof. I just love having this thing now because I used to put a lot of memory cards in my pocket and then they get lost or they go through the wash or whatever. This way they keep safe and organized right here in your camera bag. Another thing, always travel with a, uh, with a flashlight just because you never know what kind of situations you're gonna get into. If you need to be able to see in the dark, find all your stuff, whatever, keep a flashlight. I also keep just a really small, small rig multi-tool here. It just has a couple different sizes of Allens and a standard screwdriver and a Phillips. Um, and it looks like one, one star key as well just because sometimes you're way out um, and you don't have any tools, but you really wish you had just a couple of simple tools, this thing could be a lifesaver. Especially when I'm traveling and doing some editing on the go, I always bring my uh, SanDisk Extreme rugged SSDs. Um, these with the MacBook Pro, they are extremely fast and a terabyte in size, so I can edit my videos or photos off of them and then I'm not using up all my hard drive space. And because they're SSDs and they're rugged, they can kind of take a beating. Not that I recommend giving them a beating, but you know, just toss it in with the rest of the stuff and you'll be all right. All right, so the bag is packed. I'm ready to go. If there is anything that you would have put in this bag that I didn't, go ahead and tell me in the comments. Also, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. I'm gonna try to put as much of that gear as I can in the, in the description below the video. And uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope you have a great trip if you're traveling and uh, we'll see you in the next one.